All right, I got my DoorDash going. My yummy sandwich should be here in a little bit. Let me see what my blood sugar is. No data. What? It fell off again. <sighs> Isn't this band the best? They're my favorite. Do you want to try and get closer? Totally. Hold, hold up, my phone. Sorry, I have to deal with this. Oh, okay. Traditional CGM devices overall are excellent and invaluable for diabetes management. But as you have just seen, sometimes they can lead to day-to-day -day hassles depending on your patient's lifestyle and insurance coverage. And unfortunately, some of these hassles affect us healthcare professionals as well. Totally. The purpose of this video is to highlight the differences between transcutaneous sensors, that means the sensors that penetrate the skin, and the Eversense implantable sensor so that we can offer our patients a choice. Yeah, it's all about choice. Specific characteristics of transcutaneous sensors are that they must be replaced every 10 to 15 days, requiring the user to remove the old one and apply a new one. This involves finding a new location on the body, registering a new code into a smartphone or reader, perhaps putting on an overlay adhesive so it doesn't fall off early, and then having to wait during the warm-up time for glucose values to appear. Now let's not forget the pre-expiration alerts that notify the user 24, 12, 6, 3, and one hour before each sensor expires. I love that you walk us through that because I know you wear CGMs. And as providers, a lot of times we don't, we forget that our patients are going through that every time they change a sensor. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. In addition to all of that, the glucose data during the first 24 hours of a new sensor may not be the most accurate, as we all know. And then, one of the most irritating issues for users are compression lows. These are fairly common at night, when someone may have their sensor on their arm or their stomach, and they lie on it, and the CGM can give falsely low values, causing the alerts and alarms to go off, disturbing everyone in bed and anybody who might be following the user remotely. Not to mention, it can lead the user to eat excessive carbohydrates in the middle of the night that they don't even need, only to raise their blood sugar later. Yeah, they, they get on the roller coaster <laughs> overnight. Sure. And I think a... just having those alerts, those false low alerts, can be more disturbing or equally disturbing as a true low. Yeah. I mean, talk about a sleepless night. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. The Eversense implantable sensor has a completely different form factor that may be attractive to some of your patients. The sensor is put under the skin with a 10 minute office procedure and then stays there for several months until it's time to replace it. It has a flat ergonomic transmitter that is worn over the skin and held there by a gentle double-sided silicone adhesive where the sensor is implanted. And the transmitter can be removed and put back anytime. This is especially convenient during intimate moments <laughs> <laughs> and other sensitive times, especially when the glucose levels are stable. Additionally, the Eversense gives on-body vibratory alerts for both highs and lows. You can actually feel it vibrate, which is really a nice feature. And to be honest, it kind of makes me want to dance. Oh, maybe not right now, Steve. Oh, all right. It is worth noting that the Eversense does have to be periodically calibrated to keep it accurate during the several months while it's implanted. But there are no disruptions or interruptions in sensor use, no prescription hassles for the user or the healthcare provider, and the Eversense has been shown to be accurate, especially in the low glucose range, which could be very important for the person with diabetes. The Eversense is especially attractive for anyone with type 1 or type 2 on daily insulin injections or certain insulin pump users. It's also ideal for active people with diabetes, including those involved in water sports such as swimming, scuba diving, surfing, or just sitting in a hot tub. And don't forget, compression lows are almost never an issue with the Eversense. I like that part of it for sure. 
David, I know you have a specific case, a policeman with type one diabetes. Yeah, so I met this police officer about five or six years ago. Were you, were you getting arrested? Uh, not that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I met him about five or six years ago. And at that point, he had been frustrated with his current option. He had tried two different companies, their CGMs, and he found that you know putting on his bulletproof vest, going in and out of hot cars, he found that the sensors continuously were falling off and not lasting the full period that they should. And this meant that he had to burn through his sensors and he was wasting his supply faster than he would like. As a result, we talked about ever since, and we tried that, and he really liked that option because if it did happen to fall off, he could put it right back on, and it has vibratory alerts. So imagine being a police officer. You can't pull out your smartphone and check what your blood sugars are, but he can actually feel through the alerts whether his blood sugar is too high or too low. Yeah, that's, that's got to be very helpful. And, you know, that situation is not that uncommon. For a sure. A lot of people we have that similar situation, getting fr sweaty and the sensors falling off. So in closing, there are many excellent CGMs on the market. The Eversense has a very different form factor that allows for survivability, reliability, accuracy, and flexibility. It's an excellent option for many of your patients living with type 1 diabetes on multiple daily injections and type 2s on any insulin regimen. We hope you found this video useful and beneficial, and thanks for your time. Thank you so much.